All right, welcome back. Today we are looking at extensive agriculture. I know we're very excited. I know it's been a while since I've released a video for five days, something like that. I know all of you were expecting to hear this. So before anything happens, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe so you see all the new updates on these videos. I'm gonna try and get caught back up on agriculture. So uh, back to the point, talking about extensive agriculture, really easy. We've talked about our intensive agricultures. Now we're moving to the ones that need a whole lot more space. Starting off with shifting cultivation or better known as slash and burn. Now this is a subsistence type of agriculture, generally done in the developing world, mostly centered on places where there are rainforests. Obviously, when trees are in the way, that's hard to farm. So what people do in rainforest is that they clear the land, they cut down the trees, they burn the trees so all the ash from the trees goes into the soil, and then they can use that to grow crops for five, six, seven years. And then eventually the soil will be depleted and they move somewhere else. Now this sounds horrible, but it is sustainable on a small level because what they do is that over time that will grow back the the trees and all that will come back so they just keep rotating and nothing ever gets used now like i said this primarily takes place in you know the the rainforests of latin america the rainforests in central africa but what is questionable what's happening about in brazil specifically and argentina is that they are clearing a lot of these forests and then just making them into pastures they're not growing anything on this land and they're not letting the land come back and they're not letting it uh, regrow which obviously deforestation and the rainforest is dangerous for everyone else our next extensive agriculture is pastoral nomadism another form of subsistence agriculture uh, basically people roam around with their animals that they're going to go and they're gonna graze on grass. Um, we see seasonal migration. We have a name for it. It's called transhumans. They go from one place to another, basically where the grass is and where these animals can live. Um, as I mentioned, it is subsistence. They live off the dairy products of these animals. They're not going to slaughter them. Why would you kill your own food source? That makes no sense to do. So they harvest the dairy byproducts from these animals and then trade with other people who practice other types of agriculture to live. And this primarily takes place in arid climates. Uh, this means little to no rain. We don't have a lot of crops, but grasses grow well, right? So these are our subsistence agricultures that are extensive. Now we're on to our extensive agriculture that is commercial. So ranching is similar to mixed crop and livestock because they're raising animals to eventually slaughter and have the animals as the product. Um, but it's also similar to pastoral nomadism because it takes place in arid climates where they can graze um, and eat a, lot of food, uh, eat a lot of grass. Now this doesn't make them as large as mixed crop and livestock. So what's unique about ranching is that they send them off to feedlots where they'll sit there for maybe six months, eat a bunch of food, sit around, get really big, and then they will go slaughter them. Um, we see these across the developed world, um, obviously out west in the United States. If you follow along latitude lines, very well known in Latin America, um, especially Brazil and Argentina are known for their ranching. Now, to sum this up and bring it back, this is an excerpt from The Jungle by Upton Sinclair who pointed out the chaos of the meatpacking industry during the Industrial Revolution. And what, what's important to take from that is how agriculture is connected to city development. Remember, when all these people started moving into these urban areas, they had to be fed. So where were we going to get that food? How are we going to process that food? How are we going to make sure it would get out to everybody at an affordable price? And they were doing that, but then when Upton goes into these meatpacking places and he sees just how filthy they are, um, you come to find that maybe we need to change what we're doing, and that's how we get to modern meatpacking today and stuff like that. But that's it on extensive agriculture. So if you are interested in hearing uh, more videos, make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll uh, see if I answer back. Stay tuned for more videos eventually.